Now, a lot of photographers have a love-hate relationship with the selective color effect. If done badly, can completely ruin a photo, but if done correctly and in a creative way, can make your photos look absolutely amazing. So today I'm gonna to be showing you two ways on how you can create a selective color effect, but in a creative way, just using Photoshop. And I'm gonna start right now. Now I'm going to split this video into two parts. First part, we're gonna be using photo one, and the second part, we're going to be using photo two, because I'm gonna be showing you two ways on how you can create a selective color effect. Now, if you want to download any of these photos, make sure to go to the link in the description. And this is going to be photo one today. Now, this is a portrait photo. Now, this particular effect, or option one, actually works really nicely with portrait photos. It's good for isolating a specific part of the photo. And in this particular case, because it is a wedding, we're going to isolate the bride and groom. So what we need to do first is basically create an adjustment layer and we're going to convert the photo completely into black and white. So what we're gonna do is gonna go to our, to our adjustment layers in the bottom right hand corner guys, and then we're gonna go and choose black and white. So go ahead and select it like so. And as you can see now, the photo has been converted into black and white. And this is really the main base of where the selective color effect starts to work. Because what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove all other colors and then selectively either add them in or a particular hue of that color back into the photo. So what we need to do first is obviously turn it into black and white. Now in this particular case, what we're actually going to do is not actually remove or add any uh, separate colors. We're going to actually remove sections of the photo where it is black and white at the moment. So as you can see, we have got the lovely models or uh, the bride and groom in the middle. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna go to our background adjustment layer here and we make sure we've got our layer mask selected. Once we've done that, we want to go ahead over to the left hand side and we want to go ahead and select the brush tool. Then up the top here, we've got our flow. What I want you to do guys is reduce that down by 15%. I also want to make sure guys that if you go over to your foreground color, making sure your foreground color is currently black. Now what we want to do is we want to increase the brush so it's quite large. We want to make sure the hardness and you can go up to the top left hand corner we want to make sure the hardness is completely zero, so 0%. Zero then what I want you to do is go ahead and just ever so slightly painting in back the area that you want to be isolated, so the main part of the photo. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and select the bride and groom here. Now I've turned the flow down, so it takes several attempts to add it back into 100% color. Because obviously what I want to do is create almost a gradient. I would also recommend is slowly and steadily increasing the brush size so it becomes a little bit more of a gradient, a little bit more of like a feathered effect. And then if you want to, you can start clicking around until you are happy. Now, obviously, if you go over any area that uh, you uh, didn't want to, all you'll need to do is either press X on your keyboard or you can go and go ahead and select white as your foreground color. And then you can go ahead and reverse paint back in. Now, if you want to have a look at how your layer mask is looking, you can go to click option or alt on that layer mask. And as you can see, this is the area that we're painting. So at the moment, white is completely opaque and black is transparent. And as you can see, it's slowly converting into a gray. And that is because we are using a flow effect instead of opacity. So what I'm gonna do is slowly and steadily add in all of those colors that I like. Lovely. So go ahead like so. Now, if we left it like this, it would look a little bit odd. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna create a bit more of a sepia tone. So it's not truly black and white, but it has basically got a monochromatic effect in the background. We can do this really easily by basically creating a photo filter. So we're gonna go down to the bottom right-hand corner again, guys, and we're gonna go up to photo filter. And what you want to do is to add in a warming effect. You can either choose warming effect 85 or warming effect 81. I'm gonna choose 85 in this particular case. And then what you want to do is increase this to around 45%. What you want to do is have this above the black and white layer so it has this effect here. And as you can see, it's created this really nice warm tones, but as you can see, the blue of the flowers, but also blue of the, the men's suit 
is coming through, but the rest of the photo is black and white. And it's a really, really nice effect. And if done well, like for instance, this photo here, you can basically isolate your subjects using color. And it works really, really nicely. Now, this isn't the only way to do this. So I'm going to be showing you the second way on how you can create this effect. So here we now have option two. Now this is a good way of, if you've got something that's very vivid or very bright. Now in this particular case here, as you can see, it's a snowy scene of London. And London is famous for having telephone boxes that are bright red. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna isolate that using just simply two adjustment layers. So obviously we want to isolate one color and it is red. So firstly, we want to go down to our adjustment layers icon found in the bottom right hand corner. And then we're gonna go ahead and select hue and saturation. Now, obviously we know it's red, but if it's a bit of a confusing color like magenta or green, or let's say something like that, then it might be a little bit more difficult to isolate. So what we can do is actually use the color picker tool, which is found just next to your master selection. We're gonna go ahead and click that. And then we're gonna go ahead and click the color that you want to keep. And as you can see, obviously this is red, but in your particular case, it might be something else. So what you want to do is remove all other colors apart from red. So what I'm gonna do is go from red, drop down to yellow. We're gonna to go to the saturation here and we're gonna drop that down to minus 100. Then we're gonna do green, we're gonna do exactly the same. So take the saturation all the way down to minus 100. Then again, cyan all the way to minus 100. Blue, again, all the way down. And then lastly, we have magentas. And we're gonna take that all the way down as well. Now, as you can see, if we've got this section here, the red, so the top level is basically all the colors found in the photo. The bottom level is all the colors that we have now in the photo. So as you can see, red is selected. So if we go back and choose red, you can see red is highlighted within the second band here, but everything else is gray. And as you can see, it is now isolated just the telephone box using the color. But if you did notice, if you drop down to here, there is still a little bit of color in the shrubbery. So what we can do is basically use again, the black and white layer to remove any other parts of the photo that have color. Again, it really depends on what you're working with. If you're working with lots of parts that are red and you just wanna isolate one, then converting it into black and white and then using the hue and saturation layer will definitely work. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go down to our bottom right hand corner again guys for the last time and we're gonna go ahead and choose black and white. Now obviously it's converted the whole photo into black and white and we don't necessarily want this. We just want to select the telephone box in red. So again, we're going to be using our layer masks. So what we want to do is go to your brush tool found on the left hand side, making sure your flow is at 100% this time. Then also guys, making sure again, we're painting black as our foreground color and then we're gonna make a little bit of a harsher brush. So I'd recommend going to your brush symbol and going to your harshness and choosing around 50%. And then all you need to do is just start painting back in the area that you want isolated. So we're gonna go ahead and paint back in that telephone box. So we're gonna go ahead, just down here, making sure we don't go too far over any edge. And as you can see, I've made a little bit of a mistake here. So I'm gonna make this brush a little bit smaller. I'm gonna sweep over, so now white is my foreground color and I'm just going to remove that area that I didn't want to have in. And if we go ahead and zoom out, as you can see, the telephone box is now isolated and it looks really, really nice. I must say, I really, really like this effect, but you have to think about it creatively. A lot of people go in and just isolate one small part and leave the rest of it. But if you use the selective color effect in a creative way, you can create really, really good photos. And I'll show you now on the screen a few ones that I found on the internet and on my Facebook page uh, that I think look really, really good. So if done well, you can make absolutely amazing photos look really good just using the selective color effect. And there we go, guys. Here is the before and here is the after.